Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today we're going to figure out when life begins. Because according to this birthday card, life begins at this age. The rest was just training. So let's take our beautiful expression here and let's figure out when life actually begins. Okay, there is a lot of stuff going on. We have all of this here in this square root. Then we have these parentheses, all of this raised to the power of 1 over 2. And then all of this raised to the power of 4. So maybe we start with the exponents. There is a rule if you have something raised to the power of a and then you take all of this again and raise it to the power of b, then you are allowed to just multiply the exponents. So you take your base, your x, and multiply a by b, so you have a times b as your new exponent. And we would do this with the 1 over 2 and the 4. So to find our new exponent, we are allowed to multiply 1 over 2 by 4, which gives us 4 over 2 equals 2. So in total, we have 1 times 2, which just equals 2. So instead of these two exponents, we can just write a raised to the power of 2 here, so that our expression looks like this now, where we only have these parentheses and all of this raised to the power of 2. But this is perfect, because in here we have the square root, and if we square a square root, then the square cancels out the square root, and only the things that are in my square root are left then. So my expression looks like this now. Still a lot of stuff in here. Um, maybe we start with the logarithm here first. ln of 1 is always just equal to 0. So here we have 0 plus this expression. So the 0, we can just erase this here. Then we have one problem less. Uh, what's next? Maybe here, 9 times 2 exclamation mark. What is the exclamation mark? This is the factorial. So we have 2 factorial here. How can we calculate it? Well, if you have something like 5 factorial, for example, this means that you always start at this number, at the 5, and you multiply this by the next smaller number, by the 4, you multiply it by the next smaller number, next smaller number, until you get down to the 1. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. In our case, we only have 2 factorial, so this means we start at this number, at the 2, and we multiply it by the next smaller number, by the 1. We already arrived by the 1, so this is the end. 2 times 1 equals 2, so 2 factorial is just equal to 2. So in total here we have 9 times 2, which equals 18. Then maybe we can take a look at this thing here. This is not a fraction. There is not this line here in between these two numbers. This actually is a binomial coefficient. 5 choose 3. How can we calculate this thing? Well, there is a formula if you have n choose k in general then this is calculated by a fraction. You take the first number, the, the n, and use the factorial. And in the denominator, you take the other number, the k, and also factorial. And then you multiply this by n minus k. So you subtract these two numbers. We have n minus k, and then again factorial. So, in our case, we have 5 choose 3. What does the formula say then? You take the first number, n factorial. So, in our case, 5 factorial. Then you have k factorial. So, in our case, 3 factorial. You multiply it by 
n minus k, so 5 minus 3, and then factorial again. 5 minus 3 equals 2, so we have 2 factorial here, so I erase this already, 2 factorial, and then this looks like this. Let's calculate this thing. 5 factorial, we've already seen what it is. It is, we start at the 5 and multiply down to the 1. 3 factorial, same thing, but we start at the 3. 3 times 2 times 1. And 2 factorial, we already had that. We start at the 2 and times 1. Now we can cancel some things out here. We have times 1, okay, it doesn't matter at all. We have the 2 here, the 3 here. We can um, reduce 4 over 2, which equals 2. So in total, we only have 5 times 2, which gives us 10. So this thing here equals 10. 10 and my expression I wrote it down on the next page again I have my 10 here my 18 here uh, this thing is not there anymore so my expression looks like this now it's getting better we will find out when life begins soon let's take the sign of pi over 2 next how can I calculate this I first want to find the value of this green thing and after I found that then I'm going to calculate the square root of it but first this in here. Either you know this value by heart or if you don't you can always take a look at the unit circle to find the values for sine or cosine. The unit circle is a circle of radius 1. So I have the value 1 here, 1 here, negative 1 here, and negative 1 here as well. On the x-axis I can find the values for cosine and on the y-axis I can find the values for sine that I am interested in here. Then I have to take a look at the angle. I'm interested in the angle of pi over 2. Where do I find this value now on my circle? I always start here and if I would go a full circle then I would have an angle of 2 pi. We are not interested in 2 pi, we are interested in pi over 2. So have a circle would be half of this, this would just be pi. So if I'm here, this would be the angle of pi. We are not interested in pi, we are interested in pi over 2, so half of pi. So we don't go a half circle, but half of it. So we only go a quarter circle and uh, stop here. This is my angle pi over 2. And at this point here, I want to find the sine of pi over 2. So I take a look at the y-axis because I can find the values of sine here. And which y value do I have at this point? It is 1. So sine of pi over 2 is just equal to 1. Then I need the square root of 1, which in total is just 1 one as well. So I have all of this over one, so the denominator, this over one, I don't need this at all, so I don't have a fraction here actually. Um, I can calculate these two numbers then. I have 10 plus 18, which in total equals 28, so this is the only thing that is left, and what is this thing here? This is a matrix in here. We have three columns and three rows, so a three by three matrix. And these lines here tell us that we have to find the determinant of this matrix. How can we find the determinant of a three by three matrix? For example, with Saru's rule. 
Sarus is the name of the French guy, so actually the pronunciation would be Saru, but never mind, we call him Sarus. Um, and the rule says, take the first two columns and write them down here at the end again. So this is the first column, this is the second column. And now we have these diagonals, number one, diagonal number two, diagonal number three. Now well, this should be the four, so let's make it like this. And we have the other orange diagonals here, here, and here. And to find the determinant, we now only have to multiply along our diagonals. So we have three times two times one, which equals six. And then we add the same thing with the next diagonal. Zero times negative one times zero equals zero. We add the same thing with the last green diagonal. One times one times four equals four. And then we always subtract the same things with the orange ones. Zero times two times one equals zero. We subtract the next orange one. Four times negative one times three equals negative 12. And we subtract the last orange one. One times one times zero equals zero. In total, we have six plus four, which equals 10. Negative, negative 12 is positive 12. So in total, we have 22 as a result for the determinant of this matrix. 28 plus 22 equals 50. So life begins at 50. The rest was just training. Well, some of us are still in the training. Others might live a wonderful life already. Either way, I wish all of you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. <laughs> Take care.